Grundrisse is a collection of rough notebooks penned by Karl Marx between 1857 and 1858. The term itself means outlines in German, and although the work is fragmented, it covers a wide range of topics that provide a groundwork for Marx's later economic theories, primarily explored in Das Kapital. In Grundrisse, Marx elaborates on his critique of political economy, developed from a synthesis of Hegelian dialectics, French socialism, and English economics. In the broadest sense, Grundrisse can be seen as a meditation on the process of capitalist production and the problems inherent in the capitalist mode of production. The work can be characterized by its intensive analysis of capital, labor, and their dynamic interaction, as well as historical materialism, which posits that economic structures define all societal relationships. At the heart of Grundrisse is the concept of commodity production. Commodities are objects produced for exchange in the marketplace, indicating the onset of capitalist production. Marx explains that in a capitalist system, human labor itself becomes a commodity, which he refers to as labor power, bought and sold in the market. Money for Marx evolves as a universal medium of exchange. Its role becomes central to capitalist production because it not only facilitates the exchange of commodities, but also masks the true social relationships involved. Marx explains that money leads to capital, where it is used to create more money, an endless process signifying the capitalist cycle. Marx takes a deep dive into the concept of surplus value, which is the value produced by labor over and above the cost of labor power. This surplus value is appropriated by the capitalist, the owner of the means of production, without compensation to the worker. Marx identifies surplus value as the source of profit and the driving force behind capitalist accumulation. Underpinning the entire capitalist system is the fundamental contradiction between the forces and relations of production. The forces of production include labor power and the means of production, while the relations of production refer to the social and technical ways that work is organized. However, while technologies and efficiency improve, the relations of production based on private property and class distinction become fetters that eventually stifle the productive forces. It is this inherent contradiction that Marx believes will lead to the demise of capitalism. Marx propounds that the nature of capitalism is also cyclical and crisis-ridden. Periodic crises of overproduction, where commodities cannot find markets or are sold below their value, result in the devaluation of capital, unemployment, and ultimately, the collapse of entire sectors of the economy. These crises come about because the motive of production is profit rather than the satisfaction of human needs. The concept of free time is crucial in Grundrisse. Marx envisions a society where individuals have more leisure time as the necessary labor time decreases due to technological advancements. However, under capitalism, this free time is absorbed by the generation of surplus value rather than contributing to the well-being of the individual. Marx elaborates on the social forms of production, explaining how different organizational structures of society correspond to specific modes of production, from tribal and ancient communal systems to feudalism and then capitalism. Each societal structure emerges, grows, and is eventually replaced as it becomes a hindrance to production. A critical component of Marx's analysis is the distinction between formal and real subsumption of labor under capital. Formal subsumption occurs when pre-existing forms of labor are taken over by capital without changing the mode of production. In contrast, real subsumption involves the Industrial Revolution's fundamental transformation of labor processes, optimizing them for the generation of surplus value. Furthermore, Marx discusses the notion of the general intellect. This concept refers to the collective knowledge and skill embodied in machinery and productive technology developed over time. In capitalism, this general intellect is appropriated by the capitalist class, despite being a creation of the collective efforts of workers. The Grundriss also touches upon matters such as competition among capitalists, the role of credit, the global market, and the international division of labor. The international scope of capitalism, for Marx, leads to a world market and is another important factor in the revolutionary transformation of society. As capital extends across the globe, it not only encounters pre-capitalist structures, but also interconnects national economies, 
laying the groundwork for a potential global uprising against capitalist modes of production. In examining the character of capitalist society, Marx suggests that it is transient, much like the societies that preceded it. Capitalism, driven by its inherent contradictions and tendencies toward crisis, creates the conditions for its eventual supersedes by communism, a stateless, classless society where the free development of each is the condition for the free development of all. In sum, Grundriss is an intricate study of capitalist production and the socioeconomic relationships that define it. Marx's critique of political economy here is not simply an analysis of economics, but an exploration of human society's development and the potential for its transformation through revolutionary praxis. The text, while unfinished and sprawling, provides a foundational comprehension of concepts that would be crystallized in Marx's later works, making it a vital piece of his overall body of thought.